Okay, well, welcome to our last lesson. 10.7, it's locus. I have to say, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit emotional today. This is our last lesson together. Um, congratulations, you did it. You reached the end. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I know I might not tell it to you in person, and I just have this angry face all the time, but to be honest, I'm just proud. I'm so proud of you guys, and I just don't know how to show it. So be strong. Be strong. Okay, strong. Strength. Strength. Locus, all right? What is a locus? A locus is a set of points that meet a stated condition. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's, let's have a little example with a dog. Bark, bark, right here. A dog is tied to a pole with a five foot rope, okay? What is the furthest the dog can go from the pole? Well, the locus would be all the points the dog can walk to, furthest from the pole. So let's think of it this way, let's say I had this rope and it's five feet right here, right? This would be the furthest the dog can go. But don't forget, the dog can walk all the way around this pole. So all the way around with this crappy circle would be the locus. So that's it. It's just the locus of the set of points that meet this condition. So let's talk about five different situations. The first one is drawing the locus from a line, okay? I mean, sorry, drawing a locus from a point. All right, today for this one, we're going to draw the locus of points three units from the origin. Now, what does origin mean? You might remember this. This is zero, zero. Here's the theorem that's going to help us out. The locus of points from a point is a circle with a given point at its center. Okay, so in this case, our point is zero, so that's our center. And the locus of points that are three units from it will be a circle. And why? Well, think back to the dog, right? So the dog can walk three feet away in this case. And remember, he can go all directions. So let's get out our trusty compass. This is going to help us out in our lesson today. So maybe you want to bring yours out. All right. We get this. We open up three units. Okay. And three units from this point is all the way around. Every point on this circle is three units from the origin, like so. Beautiful. All right, so that is the locus of points all the way around. Every point on this circle is three units away. Now, we could also write the equation of this circle, right? In this case, the center is 0, 0, so we could just say x squared plus y squared. There's nothing to add or subtract there. And our radius is 3. So what are we going to put here? 9, which is 3 squared. Okay, first one down. We know how to draw the locus from a point. The next one is we're going to draw a locus of a point two units away from a line, okay? In this case, a line, two units from this line. Well, here we go. This is the theory that we're going to use. The locus of points from a line is a pair of parallel lines on either side of the line. Well, let's see why. So we want to draw the set of all points two units from this line. So there's two ways we can draw this. One, we can go up to, right? And if we go up to, we get this nice little dotted line over here, right? And by the way, the locus is usually drawn with the dotted line. Our next one would be drawn like so, all right? It could be two units down, right? So two units up, one, two. All these points on this line are two units away from this line. And I could go two units down, all right? And all these points are two units away from the line. So what is the equation of the locus? Well, there's two equations here. One would be, let's count up, one, two. So this would be y equals two. And there's another one, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the other one would be y equals six. And that's the equation of our locus. All right, two down. For the third one, we are going to find the set of points equidistant from line A, B, and C, D. And A, B, and C, D are a set of what? parallel lines. So that is what we will be discussing. The theorem that will help us out is right here. The locus of points equidistance from two parallel lines is a line, and this is the key word you should be looking at because this will be your reference point, all right? So if you see parallel lines, you know the locus will be a line that's midway between the two. So let's see, A, B, and C, D. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 apart. So the line that would be in the middle here 
would be 5 away, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's draw that line. Let's get our trusty line out. Now you guys should be taking a ruler out. Something pretty like that. All right. And try to draw a draw dotted line like I'm about to do. Okay. We're going to just do a dotted line. All right. So five away would be right here. And that would be our locus. It is five from AB and five from CD. Don't believe me? Let's count it out. Let's see. It's one, two, three, four, five from AB. And it's also one, two, three, four, five from CD. It is equidistant from both lines. What's the equation of this line or this, the locus? Well, this would simply be y equals negative 1. Why is it negative 1? Because the line goes to the point negative 1. Good. Look how pretty that looks. Feast your eyes on that. All right. The next one, the set, we're going to find the set of points equidistant from point A and point B. All right, we got A over here and B over here. Equidistance from these two. So this is two points, so we're going to be finding the locus from two points. And this is the theorem that's going to help us out on this one. The locus of points equidistance from two points is the, and this is a blast from the past, perpendicular, perpendicular bisector. Yes, it is the perpendicular bisector. Why? Well, let me explain. First, let's talk about what a perpendicular bisector is. Well, remember, it is a bisector, so it goes through the middle of AB. So let's draw AB, and let's find the middle of our point right here. So let's see how long this line is. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the middle would be at 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be considered, what do we call this point? The midpoint. So if you look right here, A to the midpoint is the same distance as B to the midpoint. So that would be a good start. But what about the perpendicular bisector part, right? The whole thing here. Well, that's the line that goes through this point. It is the perpendicular line that goes through AB. So let's give that guy a draw. And once again, let's make it nice and pretty. And then we'll make it a nice dotted line, and it goes right through the midpoint like so. That would be the perpendicular bisector. Let me get rid of all this stuff. So why is the perpendicular bisector the locus? Well, let's test it out. As we said, A is 5 units from the midpoint, and so is B. So we know this point is definitely, a, a, what's it called, a, a locus. It's equidistant from A and B. But let's say we go up here. Would this point be equidistant from this point? Yeah, it sure would. Look at it. These look about the same. If I go from here to here, would this be equidistant? Yeah. And if you draw any line from the, from the locus to either of these points, it will always be the same distance. So the whole perpendicular bisector, this whole nice line, will be the locus. And what's the equation of this line? Well, you should look at lesson 3.6. That will tell you how to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector. But in this case, it's pretty easy. It's just a straight up and down line. When a line is vertical, it is just x equals, and this is negative 2 over here, 1, 2. So it's x equals negative 2. All right, our final one. Draw the set of points equidistance for lines L and M. I'm just going to give it to you here. This is two intersecting lines, right? L and M are intersecting lines. Intersecting lines. And this theorem is the one that's going to help us. The locus points equidistance from intersecting lines is a pair of angle bisectors. What's an angle bisector again? Well, just think of the word. Bisector means the cut in half. So it cuts an angle in half. So let's give this a nice little draw. Right over here would be our angle bisector going right through the middle, and right over here would be, that's poorly drawn, right over through the middle would be our angle bisector. So these two lines would be our angle bisectors. It cuts these angles in half. Well, just a quick thing. Why does that even work? Well, let's draw a line. The distance from here to our angle bisector would be the same from the distance from here to our line. Remember, this is looking for the, the set of points equidistant. So the angle bisector 
is the locus of points from intersecting lines. Intersecting lines, two points, parallel lines. We got this all covered now. Let's do some problems. On the set of axes below, sketch the locus of points, two units from the x-axis, all right, two units from the x-axis, and sketch the locus of points, six units from the point zero four. So we actually have two things that we're going to be drawing here, two conditions. One, condition one would be two units from the x-axis. And the second one will be six units from 0, 4. So writing out your conditions is really going to help you. All right. So we have two conditions we got to draw. Well, the first one, we're finding two units from the x-axis. Well, the x-axis is this axis right here, which is just a straight line. So maybe you want to use that as your reference. So we're just going to draw that line right here. And now we're going to find the locus. The locus is two units from the x-axis. So remember, it's just two up. Let's draw this two up. All right. And two down. Why are we drawing a line on top and bottom? Well, that's in your reference guide. Remember, from a line, it's two up and two down. And that's just how it goes. The second one, our second condition, is six units from point zero four. So zero four is one, two, three, four right over here. We take out our compass. Since this is a point, the locus will be a circle. Remember that? That's why we did a reference guide here. So it's going to be six units away. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six units. We will now draw our circle. All of these points are six units from our center. Mmm, that looks so pretty. Now, what points meet both conditions? Well, there's one right over here, all right? There's one right over here, and there's one right over here. And we're going to mark those with X's, all right? When we find locuses, we're going to put X's because it meets both conditions. It meets the first condition and the second condition, those points of intersection. So our first point is 0, negative 2. That's our first locus. Our second one is 5, 2. And our third one is negative 5, 2. All right, for our next example, we're going to graph the locus of points that are equidistant from line x equals 2 and x equals 6, and also graph the locus of points that are 5 units from the origin. We're going to state all coordinates that satisfy both conditions. So our first condition is going to be equidistant from lines x equals 2 and x equals 6. All right, x equals 2 and x equals 6. And our second condition, condition is 5 units from the origin. So 5 units from origin. Well, let's start with drawing our lines x equals 2 and x equals 6. x equals 2 is just a vertical line like so at 2. And x equals 6 is a vertical line at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So remember, this is a set of parallel lines. So our locus will be right in the middle. So we count this, one, two, three, four. So right in the middle would just be two. So one, two, look at that. Two in the, is just two in the middle. One, two, one, two. So that would be our first condition, this line in the middle, because it's a set of parallel lines. Now the second one is five units from the origin. So let's graph that out. Uh, well, our origin, remember, is point zero, 0,0. That's right here. We get out our trusty compass. Our trusty compass. Oh, look at all those compasses. Let's bring it down. It has to be five units away from the origin, so it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's draw our circle. Remember, the locus points from a circle, I mean, from a point is a circle, so we draw like so. All right. Throw out our compass, and now let's mark, mark our points of intersection with an X. We got one right here, and we got one right here. Great, now we just have to state what our locus, which ones meet both conditions. Well, right over here we have two, three, and we also have negative two, three. Oh, that is so, so wrong. It is one, two, three, four, three. Ugh. 
I am retired, and also 4, negative 3. Sorry about that. Okay, for our final two problems, we're going to find, this is without a coordinate plane, but we still are going to do the same things. Towns A and B are 16 miles apart, all right? Now, once again, it's not on the coordinate plane, but we're just going to estimate what things look like. All right. How many points are 10 miles from town A and 12 miles from town B? The way you do that is you have two conditions here. The one, first one is 10 miles from town A, which is a point, so we're going to draw a circle. And the second one is 12 miles from town B, so it's a point, so it's another circle. So let's estimate this, okay? How many points of intersection are there 12 miles from town A? So 12 miles, let's say that's half, that's 8. So we'll just keep going, and that's like about 12. Let's draw a nice little circle there, all right? So that would be all points 10 miles from town A. Now our second one, we want to find 12 miles from town B. So let's see. Um, 12 miles would just be a little further, I'm guessing. So, let's draw it out, It'd be like over here, right? That'd be about 12 miles, or maybe over here. And then we draw another circle. These are all the points 12 miles from town B. So how many points are both 10 miles from town A and 12 miles from town B? Well, that's our points of intersection. That would be right here, right? Because that point on this circle, that's 10 miles from town A. And from here to here on this circle is 12 miles from town B. We could also say that for this point right here. So there are two points that are both 10 miles from town A and 12 miles from town B. Moving along. A tree T is 6 meters from a row of corn. Okay, this is our tree. It's 6 meters from our corn. All right, that's 6. Um, and that's represented by C on our diagram below. A farmer wants to place a scarecrow two meters from the row of corn and also five meters from the tree. Sketch both loci. So it's got to be, what are our conditions? One, two meters from the row, meters from row, and two, five meters from tree. So to do this, what do we need to do? Well, our first one's two meters from a row, and if you see that this is a line, two meters would be about here, right? Let's just draw two straight lines. One, hold on, this is getting all messy now. Two meters would be about here and here, right? This is two meters, and this is two meters. And if this is, remember, if t is six, we're just guesstimating here. Now the next one is it has to be five meters from the tree. So five meters from the tree, the tree is a point. So let's bring this down. All right. And five meters would be, hold on. Well, if this is six, five would be right here, right? Somewhere between here. So that would be right like that. So the scarecrow, if it's going to be five feet from the tree, and two feet from the row of corn. Well, this is five feet, and this is two feet from here. So it's just, once again, our points of intersection, and these would be our two locuses. All right, guys, this is your final lesson. It's been 19 minutes, which is long, and I hope it was helpful. Be good. I, I wish you all the best of luck.